to stay with us. Why are you going to take a story in this show? Yeah, so they were saying that the, the tremors that they experienced between um, last Friday and Tuesday made them panic because they said it's different from the rock blasting and the uh, query blasting that they normally experience. That this one, that the ground was shaking from under. But the government have said, no, there's nothing to worry about. It's just, it's, um, it's only uh, level uh, three and four on the, I'm assuming, the Richter scale. Um, so it's nothing to worry about. They should just stay calm. <laughs> Those ones are saying, calm, okay. And I cannot blame them. Calm, okay. Make ground the shake from under. Why don't you believe your government? Uh, are, you, are you a meteorologist? But they you said know better. I expected you to even go this that you should not call it on time. Some people said that their buildings are shaking. Yes. It's, 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 and and the government of the day the, has told the, you the, not the, to worry. The thing, they did, they did. They, they, because they don't trust us not to worry about a lot of things. They don't want to say That's how they say nothing was happening to the dam. We are hungry. Nothing was happening to the dam. Now everybody is now Let's trust that the government, they know what they are doing. Come. Yes. Uh, earthquake. No, they said they shouldn't worry. You don't have it in Nigeria. There's nothing you can do about earthquake. Oh. You don't have it in Nigeria. This is a yeah. change. Uh, climate change. A lot of things that, that uh, we don't have. You know, climate much. change. Uh, make a... Uh, hey. Oh, <laughs> Nigerians, please stop no, being so saying, cynical and, you know... This is mm. not a matter of cynical. This is a matter uh, of pres preservation has, of my life. The government has told the government, which you have uh, said that, calm down, everything is okay. The punch. <laughs> INEC deploys 5,000 beavers, 18,000 ad hoc workers. Lagos State government records 300 domestic violence cases monthly. Oh my goodness. Private employers paying below 70,000 risk jail, says federal government. World Bank to grant Nigeria $1.7 billion loan, says report. Yahya Bello, EFCC besieged Kogi Governor's Lodge. Tinubu may merge MDA's scrap humanitarian ministry. And Cameroon down states plan emergency shelters. Okay, story. I have the seventy thousand uh, story. So um, at the um, this event, the annual general meeting of the Employers Association for Employ for Private Employment uh, um, Agencies of Nigeria held in Ikeja, the federal gov the DG sorry was warning Niger warning private sector. Um, recruitment agencies that they should adhere to the 70,000 minimum wage when they are employing. Uh, the, sorry, the palm sex of the Ministry of Labor Employment, Kacholom Daju, was saying this at this 13th uh, manual general meeting of the Employers Association for Private Employment and Agencies of Nigeria. And he said that it is now law to pay the 70,000 minimum wage and they should adhere. And it's now a crime for any private employer who pays below 70,000 minimum wage. But the um, president of the Employers Association of Private Employment Agencies of Nigeria, Dr. Olufemi Ogulowo, says federal government and uh, NLC you should come and clarify whether this 70,000 minimum wage is net or gross, stating that whatever gray areas are there should be highlighted and explained. So we are looking at the way they will go. Okay. Our president, there are strong indications within the presidency that <clears throat> the president, Bola Tinubu, may scrap the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and poverty elevation as part of the major reshuffling that is, that is expected to happen. Um, the exercise would also see some portfolios split and merge others merge into a single entity, while some ministers would be relieved of their duties. And this is according to um, the performance um, of, the, of the ministers. If you recall, he had appointed uh, Mrs. Hadiza Bala Usman, who is a special advisor to the president on policy coordination. And her job is to be like the... Um, the one who reviews the performances of the ministers. And according to this report, there are indications that some ministers may be losing their jobs very soon because this, this uh, riot was, was given to them 10 months ago last, from last year, November. And that um, some M MDAs may be merged to um, obviously reduce the cost of governance. So, so we we'll see how that goes. We continue to do what we do best in Nigeria, uh, Buru. The federal government is set to receive a fresh loan from the World Bank with the approval expected for loans. What? $1.7 billion. This loan is expected to be approved on September 26, 2024, according to the official documents obtained by um, the punch. It says that when this fund is received, they are, they'll be um, shared via three major development projects aiming at enhancing Nigeria's economic stability. The first project is the Nigerian Primary Health Care Provision um, uh, Strengthening um, Program, which is set to receive $500 million. 
The second would be for the Nigerian Human Capital Opportunities for Prosperity and Equity Governance, um, which is also proposed to receive $500 million, um, while the Sustainable Power and Irrigation for Nigeria project will receive the highest funding of $700 million. And if this is approved, it will make a total of $3.95 billion naira, um, loans, taking so, a million mm -hmm. dollar loan taken so far within this year, and a cumulative of $6.65 billion dollars taken within the administration of um, President Bola Ahmed Tinobu. Okay, so, okay, so um, the Lagos State records 300 domestic violence cases monthly. Mm -hmm. This is according to the Executive Secretary of the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency, Titi Lola Vaivo Adini. She says the agency handles um, 300 domestic violence cases on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. She says in the last 10 years that they have 6,333 survivors that they have assisted and they are still um, assisting. She says more people are coming around. Over the last 10 years, more people have come, come around and um, the silence on the matter is gradually being broken. They're very happy and they're um, dealing with about 300 cases now, monthly. Wow. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay, moving on to Daily Sun. A dog guba, which nobody wants to take. U.S. UK urged to slam visa ban on election riggers. Hunger and security suffocate in Nigerians. Anglican Church says few individuals have usurped nation's wealth. EFCC Tyson's news on ex kogi governor Yahaya Bello. FG stakeholders to move to tackle plastic waste pollution. CBN reintroduces cybersecurity levy on electronic banking transactions. Imo leading Southeast and South South in functional health facilities, says report. And power crisis, FG launches $56, billion, $56 million um, scattered to move power, to improve power. Okay, which story? Okay, so here yeah, below. So the gov former governor of Kogi, Kogi State on Wednesday went to the EFCC after all these months of uh, invitation that he had not come about four months and he was there, he asked to go according to his aide. He said he, he came and asked to leave and he left. But then the same aide is reporting to the uh, son that the government lodge, the Kogi government lodge in Asoko in Abuja have been surrounded by EFCC and that they are taking, um, um, they are besieging the building or the place. So it has come to our notice that the people suspected to be operatives of EFCC are currently around the Kogi government lodge Asokoro in an attempt to forcefully arrest former governor Yaya Bello. They were shooting sporadically and it was reported earlier that the former governor had gone to the EFCC. So I'm wondering, who do you want to arrest? Why the drama? Why the film? You know, it's just funny on that democracy where we must... Um, Democracy is only possible because there's a constitution. Mm -hmm. And because the constitution is the ground norm. When a person is invited under an investigation, nobody is not even immune at this time, but is now enjoying extended immunity through that of the present governor. But child, this is the drama we are faced with. I hope that they can iron out things out. I'm, I'm confused mm. because the, he's, they said he went to the EFCC. He, there's a picture of him walking into the EFCC building with the governor. Now, the EFCC say no, he's not under our custody and he's still wanted. But when he walked into your office, why didn't you arrest him? He said he's even admitting that he walked out. He said he asked the EFCC he want to go, they let him to go. Now they're not laying siege. I don't get it. Wasting, and wasting no, bullets. Not true. Wasting fuel, wasting everything. Just to. Okay. Just because somebody was Any in other story. No. Yes, no we arrested. do. In a report of an investigation carried out by a policy and data collection company, Statisens, um, it has discovered that only 12 states in Nigeria are operating more than 1,000 um, health facilities. And in most states now leads the entire former eastern region in the operation of functional health institution, um, which is there are only four to Lagos, Kaduna, and Ogun states in 30 states of Nigeria and Abuja. Um, I love this, that this is happening because with the Japa syndrome of doctors now, and then to, to notice that we're ha having increased health facilities, um, bringing the, bring, having a lot that, to the extent that we're bringing to the grassroots, you know, bringing it to the doorsteps of the people, this is amazing. And I hope that this encourages our doctors to stay back, knowing that there's work 
um, that they'll be trained and there are you know, more benefits to them staying back in Nigeria. Okay, so the Minister of State for Environment, Dr. Um, Iziak Salako, was speaking yesterday, represented of your, by the federal government, saying that stakeholders have taken steps to address the growing challenges of plastic waste pollution in the country. If you recall, Lagos, they did something similar where they banned quite a bit of um, styrofoam in, 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 in the state. So the federal, the federal government also is taking a cue. Says that the stakeholders meeting yesterday, um, the, the minister was represented by Dr. Amadou Jibril, the assistant director for Solid Waste Ministry. He said that the object, objective of the Basel Convention is to, is to which Nigeria is signatory was to protect human health and the environment by establishing appropriate control mechanisms and regulations for hazardous waste generated by the international community amongst others. So Nigeria is a party to it, and we're going to ensure that um, they clear up all the waste um, with, um, in, in, in our country as soon as possible. Moving on now to the Vanguard, our probably our final paper for this morning. Uh, let's find a story we've not taken. Importers abandon fish cargoes in Lagos port over forex landing cost. Major marketers begin lifting of petrol from Dangote refinery. School resumption parents authorities blame low turnout on harsh economy. Only seven states fully implemented contribution as assets hit 20.79 trillion naira. Uh, Musa writes, Musa threatens oil war in Ogoni. Okay, which story are we taking? Okay, so the chairman of the Seaport Terminal Operators of Nigeria, Vicky Hastrop, has confirmed that fish cargoes are abandoned at the Lagos ports across um, Lagos. She was speaking at the, sorry, I'm assuming she is a ship. The she? Speaking at the 2024 Scan Dock Workers Day in Lagos, she noted that no fish vessel is even coming to, this, to the ports in this September. But the ones that have already come cannot be cleared due to forex and landing costs and that they are left abandoned there. And we know this is a decomposing food that, you know, it um, has the ability to degenerate quickly. Also, it's a major source of food for Nigerians. And that's me taking it out of the story. But back to the story, she said, as I'm talking today, we are not expecting any fish vessel at ENL. A lot of fish vessel used to call at ENL and any time. A call at ENL any time, but now we are not expecting any fish vessel throughout this month. This is because fish has become very expensive for Nigerians, and most of the cold rooms in Lagos are full due to low demand. This is, if they're even already in cold room, it's better, but to see it waste is a concern for me. I know how expensive fish has gone. You know, we used to carry this, our panda that we used to smoke at a very affordable price, and it's extremely expensive right now but we can't even allow it that to box waste. you bought for me that time uh, i paid you was it 20, uh, 20 i bought it 53,000. oh wow so we cannot allow it to waste like that it's double the price now and the one that we waste cannot be recovered so please government please attend to this matter as much as as quickly as possible okay so um i don't know what you want government to do Shabu. go ahead no then uh -uh. it's the landing now, cost now the... it's forex and landing forex cost and it's doable now it's doable. Is it, is the wave table. it let the yeah, food wave it so that food can yeah. wave the other so they should yeah. reduce it or, yes, or wave it. make yes. it easy for them to read so parents and school authorities in the bonnie state have blamed low turnout of pupils for the new term on the biting economic hardship plaguing um, citizens of the country um, they are concerned because um, as school resumes, most of the seats are empty. Um, parents that have more than two kids are complaining that they can't afford um, to pay for the school fees. Like one of the ladies that was interviewed says that she has eight children and she can't afford to, for all of them to go back to school because we are, we are talking about um, cost of transportation, cost of the hike in fuel prices. And they're begging the government to know when um, the CNG vehicles will be pushed out to, um, on the streets to enable them, you know, uh, to help them with the transportation fees. Um, also, in another news, in Abia State, the Abia State government is saying that there will be sanctions on schools that resumed before the 23rd of September because um, the government um, and, the, and the governor, Alex Oti, had said that all schools should wait uh, and resume from the 23rd of September because they are trying to regulate and reform the educational sector. So schools that went ahead to do that, so, so um, investigations are on the way, and then they would be sanctioned. Yes. So, um, according to the stories, independent marketers have said that the NPC has authorized major petroleum marketers to commence lifting of the petrol uh, from Dangote Refinery under the, exist, the existing agreement with NNPCL. So, the independent marketer says that they don't have a direct um, agreement with Dangote, they are lifting for NNPC pretty much. So, the initial agreement stated that NNPCL is the sole distributor of the refiner's product 
and that um, findings by Vanguard indicated that some of the major markets, including 11 PLC, have already lifted products. Some of them even uh, confirmed that they have some major markets who have already lifted, but they are not lifting uh, on behalf of themselves. They are lifting on behalf of NNPCL based on the agreement NNPCL has with Dangote. And um, hopefully, I don't know, well, I mean, have you guys bought petrol recently? I, I don't even know. You don't know if it's about if it's Dangote. It's the price. It's the old price. So, so, price. so, so they, they, they confirm they are still lifting for, with the 875 Naira per litre. Which one is the old price? 650? It's 86. Uh, 875 is what they are lifting. 868, sorry. So, anyway, uh, that's all we can take on this front page review. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we we'll to our next segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.